Uh, I am uh, Grady Bailey. I'm a senior software engineer at the University of Texas at Austin. I'm also the authentication and directory services team lead here on our IAM team. Uh, I'm coming from my virtual base camp under the, the Battle Oaks here on, uh, on campus. Uh, they're ancient uh, uh, oak trees and it's well on its way to being 100 degrees here. So um, what an what a outstanding day. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about uh, the Trusted Access Platform and tapping into containers, getting started with those. Um, again, apologies that I'm gonna uh, kind of butcher this scrolling through the slides, uh, technical issues, but we'll, we'll survive. So I'm gonna start with uh, basics of containers. Um, what's a container? Container is a standard package of software, bundles together everything you need to run an application. I'm sure if you've uh, you've seen in other presentations the basics of containers, you've seen little images like this. The the key takeaway is a container takes all of your dependencies and bundles them with your application code. It doesn't rely on those being in the operating system and being consistent across all of your other apps. This allows you to run more things in one place, uh, such as multiple applications with different dependencies on one machine. Um, so, why would you use containers? Well, they're easy to develop, they're very quick to iterate on, and they're more portable, so you can run them anywhere. Anywhere you have a container runtime, you can run a container. They're self-contained and they're isolated, uh, and that makes them less resource intensive than a full virtual machine. You don't have to run, no more do you have to run a full virtual machine for your web server and for your directory server and for your identity provider. You could actually run all of those in containers on a single machine which would, would greatly simplify your infrastructure in your deployment. Um, now the trusted access platform, what's the trusted access platform? These are my words. Uh, so if anyone at, uh, in common wants to, to slap me on the hand and say, that's not quite how we describe this, uh, feel free to, but um, this is what I feel about the trusted access platform. My description, it's a suite of IAM software curated, packaged, and distributed by in common. They're containerized, they're easily configurable IAM solutions. And this is the, the best description I can come up with for the Trusted Access Platform. It's the fastest way to ramp up on community-driven solutions to community-shared problems. So we all have the same problems in higher ed. They're at different scale. They might look slightly different. And so we can all have kind of the same solutions. So that means the Trusted Access Platform and the solutions inside of it, co-manage, grouper, midpoint, shibboleth identity provider, service provider, the other little bits that exist in there, the shibboleth config builder, uh, Co-manage has the registry and the match uh, application. There's the, the IDP UI container. Um, all of those things can serve all of us because we have all of the same problems, just maybe in slightly different scales, slightly different in appearance. Um, so the Trusted Access Platform is a way to get those solutions easily. Why would you use them? You don't have to worry about dependencies anymore. You don't have to worry about, oh, my, uh, you know, I need to run Grouper. And so I have to have this exact version of Java or, oh, no, we have to upgrade this version of Java and that's not compatible with this. And now that's going to, you know, destroy this other part. You package your Java inside a Grouper, you like it's in Grouper. You don't have to worry about it uh, or any of the other dependencies that you need. Those are packaged in the container. You don't have to worry about those. Also, in common is a reliable and trusted vendor to uh, satisfy your stakeholders. We all, I'm sure we've experienced uh, skepticism when you're talking about open source software uh, on your campus and, and folks worrying about security or, or uh, reliability. Uh, and Common and Internet 2 are reliable. They can serve as your vendor um, and you can tell that to your campus stakeholders and say, look, this, this is, it might be open source, but it's coming from a reliable place. Uh, it's great to use. Uh, version updates are super easy with tap containers. You can roll them out um, incredibly fast. We do it in less than a day here when a new container is pushed. Um, and again, community-driven solutions to community-shared problems. So how do you use them? That's the great question. I can't tell you exactly how to use them at, uh, at your institution or um, your organization, but I can tell you how we've used them at UT Austin. So First thing I wanna talk about is enterprise authentication. This is a service that we built uh, to replace the primary authentication service for all of UT Austin. We had uh, three different authentication services back in 2019 and we wanted to unify them all on one. Uh, we started in February, 2019, selected that we were gonna use the Shibboleth uh, tap container. And we, uh, we built it using on-prem virtual machines for Docker Swarm nodes uh, with some failover in AWS. We went from development to testing to go live in five months. 
uh, thank in, thanks in large part to the reliability and the speed with which we could develop in using these tap containers. Um, we onboarded our customers uh, into the service uh, throughout most of 2020 and 2021, transitioned them from the legacy authentication services. And last year we performed 50, 51 million authentications. This is our, our, our bread and butter service, we like to call it. It's uh, one of the most reliable services we've ever brought up. Our campus loves it. And that's in large part due to the reliability and the, uh, the dependability of the trusted access platform containers. We also use containers uh, for our multi-factor authentication service. We use the trusted access platform Shibboleth SP container to uh, build our Duo self-registration portal. We build in the uh, Duo's web SDK uh, into the Shib SP container. Uh, we had to implement that in less than three weeks uh, due to some various complicated things on our campus. Uh, and that was in May, 2020. There may have been one or two other things going on in the world in May, 2020. Um, but we still managed to get uh, get this out in three weeks um, because of how quickly the tap containers allowed us to move. Um, we also have a major project right now, IGA modernization. We're replacing our aging identity and group management solutions. Uh, for this, we joined the Incommon CSP. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, that's the collaboration success program. Uh, we joined that in August, 2021. We started building out our midpoint and uh, grouper uh, tap containers back in uh, in early 2022. And we're doing all of this in AWS. We're using the Elastic Kubernetes service, uh, managed containers and orchestration in EKS. Um, and that is well on its way to uh, to being a full, uh, full solution. Uh, our future plans, uh, we're working on some guest potential guest identity services using co-manage and the tap container for that. We wanna build a self-service interface to our enterprise authentication service so customers can manage their own uh, metadata and integrations, possibly using the IDP UI container. And we wanna migrate from Docker Swarm to Kubernetes for our container orchestration. Uh, so a quick recap, again, lightning, uh, lightning fast. Use containers to simplify your deployments and move faster. Use the tap containers for reliable IAM solutions. These are community-driven solutions to community-shared problems. And I also can't recommend enough to leverage your resources. Uh, you've you've you know, seen countless presentations already this week. You're going to see more. Um, there are great in common training courses. That's where I got my experience with containers. Was it the Shibboleth training course uh, back in, I think, 2017 or 2018? The Collaboration Success Program is a great resource um, if you're able to join that in a future cohort. Um, that just interacting with other other peers that we all have again community shared problems the in common slack channels uh your your peers just the working groups uh that were just mentioned a little bit ago all the email lists uh leverage these resources we're we're all in the same boat in one way uh one way or another uh i know we don't have a ton of time uh we also don't have a duck race after this but i wanted to contribute my own ducks here um so uh if anyone, if we have a brief moment for questions, if not, and we want to move ahead, that's fine. I'm going to be around at the uh, uh, as much as I can throughout the rest of the day, um, especially at the community fire pits at the end of the day. Um, if you have any questions, uh, then feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email address and, and everything, contact information. I'm in the the Slack. I'm happy to chat. Um, uh, if anyone has anything that they'd like to discuss, and that. I'm done. That was as lightning fast as I could make it. <laughs>